Welcome to this tutorial for the Inibuilds A310 for MSFS. This tutorial is from a runway start with engines on. We're using the enhanced version from the MSFS marketplace, which is functionally identical to the base model that ships with SimUpt 811. It just has some cosmetic enhancements for PC. Although world map flight plans do not automatically feed through to this plane, I still use the world map to plan my flight beforehand and I'll enter the waypoints into the FMC in this video. So with that out of the way, let's go fly. First job on the flight deck is to hit B, which sets our altimeter to local pressure. First job on the FMC, we'll click into the initialize page and we'll enter our departure and arrival airports and place that in the from and to field. If you do need guidance on how to plan a flight in the world map, a tutorial is linked in the description below. Returning to the initialize page, we'll just set our cost index for this flight to 100. And we'll set our cruising altitude to flight level 260 or 26,000 feet. We'll also enter a flight ID. With that done, we can head over to the flight plan page. We'll select our departure airport and hit SID. We'll now select our departure runway, which is 04 and the SID Barkway to Sierra. And we'll hit insert in the bottom left corner of that page. We'll now scroll all the way down to our arrival airport, where we'll press the star key We'll pick the ILS for 05 and no star. We will insert that into our plan. Now all we have to do is hit clear and delete the discontinuity from the middle of the plan. And that's it, our flight plan is complete with top of climb and top of descent from runway to runway. We'll now click through to the takeoff and approach page and enter our V speeds. So you can calculate V speeds by entering various information about the runway and airplane in the EFB. But if you just want to go flying without the hassle, you can safely use the generic values of 130 and 140 shown here. Now heading up to the MCP, the first thing we'll do is set our selected altitude to our cruising altitude of 26,000. Once you've dialed in the altitude, there is one more very important thing that you need to do. You'll need to click the altitude dial into the push position, otherwise the airplane will retain the initial altitude instead of the one you've selected. Next up, activate nav mode and profile mode. We'll now set an initial speed on the MCP. We'll set this to 250, so we stay below that, below 10,000. Or to be more realistic, you can set it to your V2 speed plus 10. The plane goes into manage mode shortly after takeoff anyway, so it's not hugely important. We'll also set our initial vertical speed to 2000 feet per minute, although this also goes into manage mode after takeoff. One last job before takeoff, head back down to near the FMC on the pedestal and dial in the ILS frequency of your destination and the course for your destination runway. For runway five at Glasgow, the course is 046. Okay, it's now time for takeoff, so parking brake off and throttles to full. We'll rotate at the rotate speed we set. For this flight, it was 140 knots, so we'll pull back on the yoke, and as soon as we have positive rate of climb, the landing gear can come up. We will also activate the auto throttle and the autopilot, and we'll also roll off the flaps. Shortly after takeoff, the plane will enter its manage mode. You will see climb and throttle enunciators on the PFD, and the speed display will be replaced by dashes, as will the vertical speed display. The plane will now also follow the nav path you've planned, and climb to your cruising altitude. Looking at the FMC, we can see manage speeds and altitude for the entire flight, top of climb, top of descent, and acceleration points. Some quick housekeeping as we climb, make sure to set your altimeter pressure to standard above transition altitude in your country, and remember to set it to local pressure on the way down as well. As you reach 10,000 feet, the plane may temporarily level off as it accelerates past 250 knots, but it will resume climbing straight afterwards. Some more housekeeping as you climb, on the approach page of the takeoff approach section of the FMC, set your minimums or MDA. If you encounter ice during your climb, as indicated by an icing message on the ECAM, the de-ice is located on the overhead panel. 
at top of climb the airplane will gently level off and you'll see the altitude enunciator appear on the PFD. Now we're at cruise we'll head down to the flight plan page of the FMC and find our final descent altitude. It's 2400 at Glasgow so we'll head up to the MCP and we'll change our MCP altitude to 2000 in preparation for our descent. If we zoom out the ND display, we can see our top of descent is marked on the map a little bit further on our journey. When you reach top of descent, a vertical deviation bar will appear on the ND. To authorise descent, click the altitude dial into the pool position. You'll see descent appear on the PFD. The throttles will idle and the plane will begin its descent. You can monitor your vertical deviation on the ND throughout your descent. If the diamond moves down and the plane is above the descent path, you can slow the aircraft down with spoilers. Although the A310 is generally able to hold its descent path without them. As you pass through 10,000 on your way down, you can expect the airplane to level off while it decelerates to 250 knots. It will resume its descent once it's done that. As the airplane approaches its bottom of descent and the destination airport, it will start to decelerate to its approach speed. Just increment the flaps as it decelerates until you're at full flaps for landing. Around this time you will also see your approach speed displayed on the MCP. Just before the plane turns onto final, set the nav mode to ILS and activate lands on the MCP. Everything happens fairly quickly at this phase of flight so make sure you're configured for landing with your gear down. As the plane intercepts the localizer, you'll see the localizer enunciator appear on the PFD and the airplane will follow it no problem. As the plane reaches the glide slope, the glide slope enunciator appears on the PFD. This plane is capable of automatic landing, so if you want to do that, just activate autopilot 2 once you're on the glide slope. At around 400 feet you'll see a land enunciator. Just disable auto throttle and autopilot if you want to land manually, otherwise the plane will continue. Make sure your auto brake is set also. And if you're in auto land mode, the plane will idle the throttle, flare, brake and roll out automatically. Once you touch down, engage reverses. Idle the throttle is about 80 knots, let the plane brake to a stop, and that concludes our flight. Thank you for watching, if you found this useful, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you next time.